Water security remains the major challenge of the Iwaso Basin due to increasing water demand from competing needs. The challenges facing the Iwaso Basin and the residents who depend on it are a microcosm of the tension between centralization, devolution and ownership of water resources in many parts of Kenya. Kuna mtu wengine inaongezeka. Maji ile inatoka kwa mlima si ni ile ile tu. Wakati tunalima wakati ya gazi, maji inapungua sana. Hata unaweza eda na ukose kupiga maji na pump juu hakuna maji kukuona jua kali, kukuona shida juu maji inakuja tunapewa na rationing. Kwa hivyo ukikosa kuchota maji kwa hiyo siku unaweza kaa hata siku nne bila kuwa na maji. We have 10% legal abstractors and 90% illegal abstractors. Legal abstractors have permits and uh, they have been authorized to abstract water from the river. But when we come to the middle and lower zones, we have over 300 individual pump owners who are illegal and they have no document whatever that allows them now to abstract water from the river. Permit, hakuna mtu wako na permit. Tuambiwa nini uchukue permit, iko, iko gali sana. Ni, nikiwa na permit, ni hili mei kasiamba wakati wajua ikikuja, hata nikiwa na permit, zaidiki. Sinda hile hiko, kuna wakati mtu inakuwa, imepotea, hakuna maji. Pampu ni mingi na maji, ni jogo. Na kila mtu wana jiandika na hiyo, kasi ya maji. Sasa ukimwambia awase kupiga na hiyo na hiyo dio chakula yake anaminisi ya maji ataenda wapi. Hii maji dio dio tunatumia kwa kukunywa hata mifugo yetu na hii maji inatuletea magonjwa mengi sababu hii maji saa ingine ni safi saa ingine ni green. Tukienda kwa mandakitari wanatuambia hii maji tunatumia ni mbaya sababu ikona ikona uchafu mingi sana tunapata magonjwa ya tumbo ya ile ya kila aina hata moemba tungeomba watu ya juu wajue hata chini kuna wa kuna watu sisi tuko na shida kubwa sana ya maji tukiwa wakaji hapa kuna tunategemea tu hizi mvua ya season rain inakuja inanyesha kwa, kwa mwezi mbili sasa huwa tunakuja kutafuta maji kwa hii laga na hii laga si ile ya kusimamisha maji ni ile maji inapita tu ikienda ikipita tu ikienda kama wamasai tunategemea tu kushimba shini unatoa hii mshanga shangarayo unaondoa unashimba shini mpaka unapata maji ukipata maji maji ni kama inakaa hivi inakaa black Sasa na hapa tuko na shida kubwa sana ya wanyama wa pori. Mandofu wamejaa kila pali. Huyo sema tutafika nyumbani hiyo maji kidogo ishe urudi tena pali ujitoka pale. Unaweza ukute mandofu tena wamefurika hapo kwa laga. Tuko na marori hapa. Hii marori tukijenga hiyo ukuta, hii marori wanakuja kuingia hapa ndani. Kushota mchanga yote. Rori mbili kiingia kwa hiyo kwa hiyo kwa hiyo kwa hiyo ukuta, rori mbili tu inaingia inachukua maji yote. Tukijaribu kwenda kukimbilia wale wale watu wa wanema kwa tunaambiwa wamepeana lenses tuko na lenses ya kuchota mshanga There are three primary issues facing water management in the country 
a lack of adequate financing, especially from national government, a lack of elaborate and clear guidelines to show how institutions can help this work, and a silo approach to a resource that often spans multiple counties. In order to deliver water for all by 2022, you need something like 1.74 trillion. Closer home, uh, we need about 20 billion to do that. If you look at uh, the allocations, it's usually about 200 uh, million a year. So looking at that time span, you, you, you almost have a, a shortfall of something like 15 billion. Our ecosystems are also changing, mainly because of our intervention as human beings. We are doing a lot of destruction to it in terms of water abstraction, in terms of ecosystem degradation, in terms of uh, sand harvesting, in terms of uh, river banks you know, uh, being degraded. There will be conflict between communities, there will be conflict between uh, human beings and wild, wildlife, there will be conflict even between ourselves because there will be no food for us to be able to sustain our, our, our lives. And this has a very big impact in our, on our livelihoods in terms of food security, in terms of availability of water, not just for our own use, but also for the ecosystem and also for the wildlife. Access and use of water is a basic human right. This entitles everyone to sufficient, safe, acceptable, physically accessible and affordable water for personal and domestic uses. The law provides for this management of water in rivers at the community level through the Water Resource Users Association's rules, but they are given no resources to carry out this mandate. The Water Resource User Associations comprise of primary users of the water on the ground and these are the people who have a big interest in ensuring that the water resource is well protected and sustainably taken care of. I find that in many cases they are weak in terms of their governance structures, how they organize themselves, how they are able to manage their membership. By having weak governance structures then that affects their technical capacity to be able to undertake their mandate on the ground. Again, Again, there isn't a very clear way of how RUAS finance the operations. RUAS operate uh, within the WDC, that is the RUA Development Cycle. They have a, a point where they are formed, they have a point where they do a plan, the SCMP, and there is a, a point where they start the implementation. In their implementation, they receive resources from the water sector trust fund. So if they can move in such a cycle, then uh, you can be sure of their sustainability. Before the 2016 uh, Water Act, we had Water Resource Management Authority. And this changed in 2016 to Water Resource Authority. So the whole of management of water was left out for water uh, rules. The Water Act 2016 empowers individuals within certain area uh, to have a say on the management and on the use of water. If you look at it, it is recognizing the role of uh, RUAS, that is Water Resources Association. It is also recognizing the role of members of communities and all that. But the question is, how empowered are these entities to actually be able to do issues to do with water conservation, enforcement and all that. And also the role that uh, Water Resource Authority has to do. It also makes it very, very easy for the uh, grassroots organization like the RUAS to understand their position in the hierarchy of management of this water. RUAS, as much as they're in charge of water governance, they really need to be first of all capacitated, but it should be backed by also resources and uh, mandate so that they can be in charge because most of these communities have their own other lives. They, they are doing other things and this will be like an extra activity that they'll be doing. So they, they need incentives. Currently, we are not able to do much because we are depending on the funding from our water sector trust fund. That funding is not forthcoming and when it's coming, it's coming with conditions to the extent that a particular river may not be able to fulfill a particular condition. Within this catchment of 103 kilometers, we need about five scouts to man every zone. We pay a fee to every, to every scout. We have a manager that runs the office. We pay for his salary. We hire offices. 
So Deventry will require a lot of funds to effectively land the, the catchment. Ukiingia hapa Kurum, sisi tunabeba mabarua zetu za muhimu na mabaks. Hatuna ofisi, hatuna hata hii eh, ika draw tu, ile ika draw kuweka vitabu. Hii rua yetu bado ni changa sana. Water programming must be addressed at landscape and basin levels to understand the dynamics of water in the ecosystem and its importance to people, livestock and wildlife. This means that holistically, water is bigger than just the water in rivers and effectively managing water resources requires collaboration and partnerships. The issue of water governance, water resource management can only cannot be solved in isolation. We really need to think of it from the basin perspective or the landscape perspective, including also the other watersheds and other counties. Within the Partners for Resilience, we bring expertise in terms of disaster risk management, uh, ecosystem uh, management and restoration, and also issues on climate change. We are implementing this program through an approach called integrated risk management. And this is mainly looking at what is happening, uh, let's say, globally in terms of climate change. We are seeing so many issues uh, coming up, so many risks, climate-related risks. And so these risks are also affecting us in the developing countries in terms of the impacts which are really severe as compared to the developed world. Our main focus is two major river, river basin, that is Ewasonyiro River Basin and uh, Tana River Basin. We looked at uh, the, the kind of vulnerabilities in, in these two river basins, the kind of communities which reside here, and how issues on risk um, are being handled and what can we do as a program to be able to uh, uh, support interventions in terms of uh, risk management. The goal of this program is to build resilience of communities. When 2030 Water Resources Group started engaging with partners in Mount Kenya back in 2015, um, we found a huge opportunity whereby um, there was need for a partnership to bring together the different water users. And so having a platform where you can bring all these different users together to address um, the water resource management challenges, especially around conflicts between the upstream and downstream users was important. And since then we found that um, there's been tremendous progress. We're now moving into um, practical solutions such as um, strengthening the institutional capacity of the water resource user associations, as well as investing in storage um, both um, large-scale storage as well as household and on-farm storage solutions, as well as supporting farmers to be able to invest in water efficient practices is a key role that the partnership continues to play. In response to the new laws and the situation on the ground, the people around Iwaso Basin are trying novel approaches to water resource management in their area. One effective example of these new approaches is the Mount Kenya Iwaso Water Partnership, MQEP, which was launched on the 14th October 2016. MQEP is a multi-stakeholder platform bringing together public civil society and private sector actors within the upper Iwaso Niro North Basin to engage collectively in water resource use, conservation and management. MQEP membership consists of five county governments, four national government agencies, 12 commercial growers, 30 rewers, two water service providers, seven conservancies, two civil society organizations, two financial institutions, and two research institutions. MQEP's task is to provide a platform for dialogue, information sharing, collective action, advocacy and capacity development in order to address the identified challenges and their vision is water security for all in the basin. One of the biggest role that Mount Kenya Water Partnership, water Partnership is doing is bringing the various key stakeholders together in a common table to have this dialogue about water. I see Mount Kenya Water Partnership uh, being like the nerve center for uh, water management within this region. To achieve the dual objectives of strengthening rural capacity as an integral organization for subcatchment level integrated water resources management, as well as increasing water resource authorities' efficiency and effectiveness towards enforcing compliance, with standards for the management and use of water resources, we propose a rural services agreement. 
a mechanism for strategic partnership between WRA and RUAS, where the RUAS offer specific delegated performance-based services on behalf of the Water Resource Authority. The Water Resource Authority then remunerates the RUAS on achievement of the set performance targets. RUA Services Agreement as a model will help RUAs better manage their catchments as part of the money collected is to be channeled back to help in repair and protection. The RUA Service Agreement is very important because it can help to structure and clarify this relationship between the Water Resource Authority and the RUAs around responsibilities that work for uh, regulation and management of the resource and thereby help in the in the business of water resource management improving data whether it's stream flow data whether it's uh, abstraction data can help in surveillance of the the catchment the riparian if there are things going on in on the riparian area the water resource authority in their office are unlikely to know it's the people on the ground that will know, oh, there's something happening in the riparian that can affect the water quality. The Water Resource Authority should know about it, but they don't have the capacity to be everywhere. Uh, if you have a resource, if you don't have mandate over it, you might not give it 100% in terms of, let's say, you know, taking care of it. So the, this kind of model is really important to, to ensure that RUAS actually are in charge in terms of taking care of their resources. But of course, within the, the policies which are there, not of course acting out of it, but how can they use this uh, kind of model to be able to now put in place better measures, better management structures to deal with the water resource issues. Ngosishi Water Resource Use Association is an example of this approach rolled out in conjunction with the local community. Ngosishi Water Users Association is an association of 16 water projects, uh, nine commercial farm, seven, com uh, and se seven community water project. But actually, even last year we increased. Now we are almost 20 water projects because we have other borehole members. Our area is 104 kilometers square. We have a population of 10,900 people that are beneficiary of this association, and the spring production is only 64 liters per second. So you can see the impact because of the good management. Kushishirua, neto taizeti na watuajera mutaro, todo mai mara okaga kinyanyoba. Mara shoka mara tohe mete ya kuhada, to kuhada kumwe na ine wa mai, nega za terio shoti gogo kuwa go ne mai, ne ne matuweke tio kuwa. Kushishirua imeto sign imeni sign dia sana sa kupande wangu. Juu wakati atukua tumenjengewa hii in common intake tulikuwa na tatizo matatizo mingi sana ya maji ya kuwa yanatosha lakini kutoka tumjengewa hii common intake nimefaindika kwangu sana juu tunalima napata masao mazuri na tunauza mbali kitu kingine nayo ya muhimu sana ni hakuna conflict juu maji nafikia kila mtu juu hii maji yetu inatoka kutoka hapa inaenda mpaka 33 kilometers na hao watu wanafaindika na hayo maji. Na imetusaidia sana kwa ukulima. Tunalima mboga, viazi, mahindi na hiyo maji kidogo lakini yenye tunaitumia inakuwa maji mingi sana kwa kasi yetu. For last as the Guzishi Water Users Association, we even today we are collecting money on behalf of the government. We also do a lot of monitoring, we remove the illegal abstraction we ensure that the 30 percent is flowing and if the 30 percent is flowing then there is no conflict mqep has also come up with an innovative financing model called the ewaso maji user savings and credit cooperative emusako that is paramount in upscaling adoption of water harvesting, storage and application technologies in order to energize new investments in water storage at household, farm, subcatchment and catchment levels, particularly for smallholder farmers. We realized that there are a lot of challenges in terms of uh, financing the infrastructures for dams, water pans and the rest. So we've come up with uh, an innovation where we are asking uh, people to come together 
they put their, 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 their money together and they can, one can be the collateral for the other. We are the first, can, the first organization in this region to have a water circle. Majiote imekuwa corrected na hizi vari za mabati. Ewaso Majiote circle is distinct in this landscape because we mainly focus on water conservation and helping uh, local farmers to mitigate the effects of climate change by helping them to invest specifically on water technologies that will help them to store water during the rainy season and will better enable them to still continue with their farming even during the dry seasons. Most local farmers can't access financial facilities easily because most of them do not have major assets that can back them up to getting funds, especially for water conservation. So we are willing to go the step with them and give them finances to put in this water infrastructure. And this we have also uh, put up very considerate uh, interest rates just to ensure that they get a chance to be able to build in these infrastructures in their households and really build their resilience. MSACO will provide or will link uh, these uh, members with the right people who will provide water correction, water pan, or even the projects, water projects for storage purposes, or also we link with the market and the suppliers. We want to have that value chain, where as they produce, there's ready markets, and also they make maximum uh, use or maximum benefit from whatever they are doing. <laughs> A mimi ni mede benefit na kitu moja mapo ya masomo e, mimi naenda kwa masomo na ninaelefushwa kuhusu mapo umuhimu wa kusto maji wakati nilienda masomo kwa msako niliona wako na experience ya kutosha na divyo na, nasema mwaka huu wa 2020 tukifika June msako itakuja kwa gu na iliweke drizzle saa hiu kipata drizzles sa mvua kutoka huko kwa mabati sitakuja niende tu kama one inch maji yanze kuingia ndani yale mapato kidogo ninapata na save na m sako na nikichaa save na m sako duration ya miezi 3 nimequalify kupata loan ambaye ni loan hainanga ile interest kubwa hiyo m sako nitawa approach hao wanaweza kunionyesha leakages mahali nitaweza pata liners drips na mambo mengine kama hiyo These residents and the local community are walking a new journey as they balance resource conservation and economic opportunities with more support greater uptake and increased collaboration their successes can be quantified adjusted and rolled out across the nation it is not that there is no water. It is only that uh, the river does not have the capacity now to know the issues of smart funding and all that to the members. So when that service agreement is there and it's spelled out clearly, we'll be able to manage uh, the water resources. We'll be able now to spread out to our farmers. We'll be able to go to the areas of water use efficiency, water harvesting, and we are not going to get all the issues of uh, conflict that we are getting today. The community are always the Liberian members. They are the owners of those intakes. They are the people who even some springs come from individual uh, uh, lands. So if this model of rural service agreement can be adopted, then it is very, very easy for the rivers to be flowing. It will help to assist other rivers to come up and be strong. We can make greater impact if we move together. The national government can help maximize and optimize the use of water resources to the benefit of all. As illustrated by increasing their financing toward the water sector, especially at the community level, because community agencies in the subcatchment are best positioned to operate and manage water resources for the Water Resource Authority using the Rua Services Agreement. This will provide a flourishing framework with a bright future for all Kenyans and the resources they need to thrive. Water is a um, shared challenge. 
And so going forward, it is important that all actors realize that water resource management is also a shared responsibility. And going forward, I would urge all partners to continue working together collectively to ensure water security for all. There is an opportunity for different stakeholders to come together and demonstrate uh, water stewardship. The Mount Kenya Iwaso Water Partnership provides an elementary demonstration of how this stewardship can be put in place, how it can be executed. There is a lot of learning that can be picked out and which we can uh, also institute in other areas of the country. We need to have a conversation about our relationship with water. People downstream, they need to have water for their livelihoods. People upstream also need to, to do their uh, farming, but within the law. And the law says if you are abstracting water for irrigation, you need to have a 90 day storage and you abstract during the high flow. In that context, one of the things that needs to emerge is very strong enforcement of the law to ensure that we live and we let others live as well. Individually, we have a responsibility, and part of it is raising our own individual awareness around the the water resources that we rely on for our own lives. And at the same time, it requires more investment from, uh, from government, and not just investment in infrastructure. This requires investment also in the institutions. And it, in a sense, brings us back to the Rua Service Agreement, that there has to be an openness to work with organizations on the ground and make sure they have capacity. For the EMU circle, is something I would like to see it not just implemented in upstream, I would like to see it even in the downstream. Because what, as I say, what these water issues are, are very much interlinked. And if we can be able to have a success story out of this in the upper stream, I think the same can be replicated in middle stream or downstream.